scroll down to the following code cell. In this code snippet, we store the remaining 10% of images and masked paths into the Python set val images and val paths. Also, we print the total number of images present in the dataset and the number of images considered for validation. Run the code cell. You can see in the output that we have 1250 images and 125 images have been taken for validation, which is 10% of 1250. Scroll down to the next code cell. Here we are just visualizing a sample image in the variables train images and train masks. We apply auto contrast to visualize the different shades in the segmented mask in a better way. Run the code cell. Scroll down to the following code cell. You can see the variable image size which is assigned to 512. This is the size to which all the images have to be resized. This is required since the pipeline handles batches of photos that must all be the same size. Using the resize function available in TensorFlow, we resize the images to the size of 512 by 5. To resize the image, we need to read the image from the image path. It is carried out by the read file function, which returns a tensor of type string which contains bit representations of the image. Then we decode the image using the decode PNG function. After that, we normalize the image to the range minus 1 to plus 1. Every pixel color is adjusted to minus 1 and plus 1, making images contribute more evenly to the total loss. At last, the function returns the processed image. Scroll down, you can see a function defined as load data. This function gets both in two lists of image parts and mask paths. The function loads the images and masks using the helper function red image that we have already defined and processed. At last, the function returns a processed image and the mask. Scroll down and see the third function in the code cell named data generator. Every time we feed our model, we send the pictures in batches. This happens in the code cell, which is accomplished using the batch method. Here we send four images per batch as defined at the top of the code cell. This function accesses the image and mask lists and creates a dataset object using the previously defined helper functions to make the batches of images. With the help of the dataset from TensorSlices method, we can get the slices of the images and mask list in the form of objects. To utilize multiple CPU cores, you must pass in the NUM parallel calls argument to specify the level of parallelism you want. At last, the function returns the batch dataset object. At last, we implement the processes into the train and validation images using the above defined helper functions. The train dataset and val dataset contains the dataset in batches. Also, we display the number of batches in the training and validation set. Run the code cell, and you can see the number of batches of images that we created in the output. Scroll down to the following code cell. We build the deep lab model architecture in this code cell. The function named convolution block handles the dilated convolution in the model. The dilated convolution allows us to enlarge the field of view of filters to incorporate a larger context. Scroll down and you can see the function named dilated spatial pyramid pooling. Carries out spatial pooling, which can encode multiscale contextual information. Scroll down and you can see the function named DeepLab V3+. It inputs images and outputs a segmentation mask. With a specified number of classes, the model uses the ResNet 50 architecture with weights pre-trained on ImageNet. The model removes the last classification layer of ResNet 50 and uses a custom classification layer for the given number of classes. The model combines dilated convolutions and the spatial pooling to achieve the best performance. We know we have 20 classes in our segmented mask. So here we have defined the number of output classes as 20. At last, we define the model and display the model architecture we generated using the summary attribute. Run the code cell and you can see the model architecture in the output. Scroll down to the following code cell. Using the plot model function in Keras, you can visualize the model as shown here. Run the code cell and see the model in the output. 